We now welcome back Josh Whitmore and David Bear. Guys, we took a look at SU's first four games, but now let's flash forward to the rest of the remainder of SU's schedule. They open up with a trip to Raymond James Stadium against South Florida Bulls. They had to contain Jake Locker in Washington a couple weeks ago, but now it's B.J. Daniels through the air and on the ground. Uh, well, right now, USF is looking like a very one-dimensional team. They can only run it. They can't pass it. But this week, they're bringing back wide receiver Dontavia Bogan and Mo Plancher. If they can boost this passing game this week, look out for them. Syracuse's chances might be plummeting if they can get a passing game going. SU then comes back to the Carrier Dome, hosting the University of Pittsburgh. Now, a lot of hype for the Panthers. They were the big season favorites coming into this season, but they got trounced by the University of Miami last week, and their firepower and offense has just been non-existent. Absolutely. You couldn't have put it better, Jeff. There's no offense right now. They're 85th in passing, 83rd in rushing, 88th in points per game. I think this could be a matchup between the SU defense, and I think they can slow down this pit offense. Should be a great game. Orange then traveled to Morgantown, taking on West Virginia. The big thing for the Orange, can they stop Noel Devine on the ground? Well, David, let me ask you a few quick questions here. Does Syracuse have better talent than West Virginia? No. Uh, do they have recent success against West Virginia? No. Are they playing at home against West Virginia? No. They have no chance of winning this game, Jeff. <laughs> From Morgantown, they traveled to Cincinnati, taking on the Bearcats. Cincinnati went to the Orange Bowl last season. But this season, they're led by Zach Caleros and company. Yeah, like you said, they've got a date with Zach Caleros and 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns so far this season. I think it could be a similar game to Washington, where Syracuse really struggled going up against an elite quarterback. Zach Caleros saw the Syracuse defense last year as well. So now we welcome back Dave and Josh to the set. Guys, you take a look at SU's first four games of the remainder of the schedule, the most winnable game you see. I think it comes down to either USF or Cincinnati. Both of them are winnable games for Syracuse. I don't really think they'll win either one. It really comes down to me. I think it's USF because of their how one-dimensional they are. If their passing game can't get going, Syracuse secondary is their weakest part, so that sort of plays along. Now, see, I'm taking a completely different angle. I'm going to take Pittsburgh right now. It's homecoming for Syracuse, plus that Pitt offense has been stalling all season long. I really don't see uh, Pittsburgh offense matching up well with Syracuse's defense. At home, that first Big East game, a great atmosphere. I think this could be a Big East game that the Orange can steal. Yeah, Syracuse's offensive line won't be able to block Greg Romeus. Ryan Nassib will be on his back all day, could cause a couple turnovers. Which game presents the most challenge for Syracuse in those games? Uh, I think it's definitely West Virginia, like I said. They're much more talented, leading the Big East right now. Noel Devine has torched Syracuse the last two years, and Syracuse has trouble against running quarterbacks. It's a deadly combination. I agree, but I still think the most challenging game will be USF. On the road, first Big East game, always a tough challenge. 